Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell, and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication of The Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. And if you'd like to learn more about the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and you can find all the necessary information there. You can subscribe to the paper. It's free of charge. Uh, You can have it as a PDF in your email. You can receive an individual copy through the United States Postal Service. Or you can receive a bundle of the papers that you can hand out at a congregation. So if you'd like to receive it, get a hold of us and let us know, and we'll be happy to add you to one of our mailing lists. So today's episode comes from the August 1971 edition of Fulton County Gospel News, and the article was written by a man by the name of Glenn Purdy, and it's simply titled 1 John 3, 9. I don't know that I really have a good title for it, maybe something along the lines of the Christian and sin, but it's going to be a different style, you might say. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but so what the author does in this article is he references several different versions of the English Bible uh, in reference to 1 John 3 and verse 9. So I'm not going to read all of those to you, but I'll read several of them, and then I'll read what he wrote in regard to 1 John 3 and verse 9. So the first edition, or rather the first version that he references, is the King James Version of 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin, or doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Uh, The next one is the Revised Standard Version. No one born of God commits sin, for God's nature abides in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. William's translation is referenced. Uh, It says, No one who is born of God makes a practice of sinning, because the God-given life principle continues to live in him, and so he cannot practice sinning because he is born of God. Uh, The Phillips translation is next. The man who is really God's son does not practice sin, for God's nature is in him for good, and such a hereditary is incapable of sin. Now that one's quite... uh, I I don't know that that's a good translation whatsoever. Anyway, uh, the next one is the New English Bible. A child of God does not commit sin because the divine seed remains in him. He cannot be a sinner because he is a uh, because he is God's child. Uh, and then there are a few more. Um, the Good News Version, for instance, whoever is a child of God does not continue to sin because God is his father. He is not able to continue in sin. So there are several different renderings of this verse among the English versions. Now, this article was written before the New King James came out in 1982. So the New King James in 1 John 3, 9 says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, out of all of these versions that were listed in this particular article, I think, to me, one of the more accurate ones is from the Williams translation. It says, no one who is born of God makes a practice of sinning. And that's that's the part that I like the best. Because the God-given life principle continues in him, and he cannot practice sinning because he is born of God. I like the way it translate that translated that phrase. So anyway, let me read what the author wrote about these different versions and about what 1 John 3, 9 is teaching, and then we'll have some of our own comments. Many people misunderstand this verse of Scripture, but we must realize that it may not conflict with other plain Scriptures, such as, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 1 John 1, 8 and 10. What then does 1 John 3, 9 teach? The phrase, begotten of God, is more correct than born of God, We are really begotten of God through His Word, and we are born again of water and the Spirit, John 3, 3 3-5, and 1 Corinthians 4, 15. So it is not the birth of God, but begotten of God. The phrase, doth not sin, is translated from hamartian upoye, and means that one does not continue to make a habit of sinning. You can understand that he is a servant of righteousness, and must so live. Romans six sixteen through 18 The phrase, and he cannot sin, is so translated from kai udunatai hamartanein, and means that he cannot continue to live a life of sin. This does not mean that it is impossible for one who is a, 
uh, who is God's child to commit a single sin, but it does mean that if he is God's child, that he can no longer live in sin and continue to be the child of God. We often say to our children, you cannot do that. We do not mean that it is impossible for them to do that, but rather that this would not be in the keeping of the good character of our child for them to engage in such. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Yes, you can sin, it is possible, but you cannot continue to live in sin and continue to be acceptable to God. You cannot live in sin and die in the Lord. So that's the end of that article in his... his um, Uh, exposition of that particular text. And I like the way he ended the article by saying, you cannot continue to live in sin and continue to be acceptable to God. You cannot live in sin and die in the Lord. So I think to help us better understand 1 John 3, 9 and what it means that the child of God cannot sin, I think the good thing to do would be to start reading from verse 4. And I'm going to point out some things that John does here in this particular section with the words, and understanding that will help us appreciate what exactly is being said here. So 1 John 3, I'll start in verse 4. Whosoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Now right there in verse 4, that first word, whoever commits sin, that first word commit, this is what is called in the Greek language a participle. Okay, So a participle is like a verb and an adjective or a verb and a noun combined. And so literally it would say, the one who is committing sin is committing lawlessness. So it's descriptive of someone doing something and it's ongoing. It's a present tense active voice. All right, present tense. It's going on in the present time. An active voice means the subject is the one who is doing it. So the one who is committing sin commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. So then you keep on reading. And you know that he, this is talking about Jesus, was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. And again, that's another present tense, active voice participle. Whoever abides in him does not keep on sinning. Whoever keeps on sinning, again, present tense, active voice participle. Whoever keeps on sinning, verse 6, has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who, and I like the New King James here, the way it translates this. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So to, to be righteous, it, it simply means to do what God says. And when we do what God says, we are like him. And so you have to practice righteousness. Now, you get to verse 8, he who sins, again, a present tense, active voice participle. Present tense means it's going on right now. The active voice in the Greek language means that you are doing it. The subject is acting. And a participle is, again, like a verb and an adjective combined. So the one who keeps on sinning is of the devil, 1 John 3, 8. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now we get to our verse, 1 John 3, 9. Whoever has been born of God does not keep on sinning. Again, a present tense, active voice verb. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Now one of the keys to understanding this is that present tense, active voice there. The the child of God does not keep on sinning. Now, just as the author pointed out in the article, that doesn't mean the child of God never sins or that it is impossible for the child of God to sin. It's helpful to know, you know, so you don't have to know the Greek language to go to heaven, but the fact of the matter is, sometimes it's helpful to know some of these little parts of the Greek language, like a participle, and understanding the present tense and the active voice. And that's key to understanding verse 9. The one who has been begotten of God does not continue in sin. And you know, that fits right hand in hand with what uh, Paul wrote in Romans 6, verses 1 and 2. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Well, certainly not. How shall we who have died to sin continue any longer therein? See, one thing we need to understand is that sin is a lifestyle in which one can live. 
Uh, it, it can be a choice. And so he illustrates that, you know, the devil sinned from the beginning. He tells us that back up in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. Well, the child of God doesn't live like that. He doesn't live in the lifestyle of sin. Why is that, John? For his seed remains in him. Okay, now that's Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. What is the seed that abides in the child of God that is involved with this being begotten of God? Well, we know what that is. It's the Word of God. Uh, you could read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. You could read James 1, verses 21 through about verse 24 or so. We are begotten again by the Word of God, not by corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed. And so the reason the child of God does not keep on sinning is because God's seed, God's Word, remains in us. And I always think of Psalm 119 and verse, I believe it's verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The child of God does not live in sin. Now, I want to turn my Bible over real quick to Colossians chapter 3 because there are actually some folks in the religious world who say, well, there's no such thing as living in sin. I want to show you something here from Colossians chapter 3 beginning in verse 5. Now, what Paul does in the first few verses of Colossians 3 is he reminds the Christians that they are to set their affections on things above and not on things of the earth. So then listen to Colossians 3, beginning in verse 5. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Now listen to Colossians 3, 7. In which you yourselves also walked when you lived in them. And so, as opposed to living in sin, you are now living in Christ. That's what he says in Colossians 3, 3. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Whereas previously, you walked in sin, and you lived in those behaviors. Colossians 3, 5 through 7. So then, we, let me get my Bible back here. We turn back to 1 John chapter 3, and that helps us understand what it means when John says, whoever has been born of God does not keep on sinning, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. The child of God abandons the life of sin. We have become servants of righteousness. I love Romans chapter 6 in this particular discussion. You read all of Romans chapter 6 because it discusses this concept at length. That at one time, you know, outside of Christ, a person is a servant of sin unto death. But when you obey that form of doctrine, you become a servant of righteousness unto life. And that's a choice that each individual Christian, uh, that each individual has to make. And when I become a Christian, I have died to sin. I've been buried uh, in, the, in the watery grave of baptism, as we say. I've been raised to walk in newness of life. That's Romans 6, 3 through 5. And I don't live in sin. Now again, that doesn't mean that you cannot sin, that it's impossible for a child of God to, to uh, violate God's law or to fall away from grace even. We know that is possible. But I will reread the last two sentences of this article. Yes, you can sin. It is possible. But you cannot continue to live in sin and continue to be acceptable to God. You cannot live in sin and die in the Lord. And I really think that's a great way to summarize 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. The child of God does not live in sin and die in the Lord. The Christian is not a sinner. The Christian is a righteous individual. Remember 1 John 3, 7. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. We have this tendency, uh, you know, I've heard it among preachers and Bible class teachers, we have this tendency, and I don't know, I, I think it comes from guilt. Uh, I think it comes perhaps from self-deprecation, trying to make sure that people know that maybe I as the teacher or I as the preacher am not perfect, and they want to justify that and say, well, we're all sinners and we just, you know, really we can't help it. Yes, you can. Because he who has been begotten of God, he who has been born again, does not keep on sinning. That's what 1 John 3 verse 9 means.
All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you tuning into this episode of the Fulton County Gospel News podcast. If you've not yet subscribed to our Podbean channel, I would ask that you do that, and you can interact with each individual episode. As I said in the beginning, if you're interested in the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and get a hold of us, and we'll be happy to put you on any one of our mailing lists. So thanks again for listening today, and I will catch you on the next episode of the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast.